So I'm pretty unwell at the moment, actually. I've got a bit of a cough and a cold. But um, one thing that has annoyed me that I had to do a video on was this this uh, distinction between economic migrants and asylum seekers that is being rapidly undermined by progressive language. So as the Independent explained to us here, it's not a legal classification, but an umbrella term for a wide array of people that move from one country to another to advance their economic and professional prospects. Not just economic migrant is really just a migrant. They would just prefer to live in this other country for whatever reason they want. Theirs just happens to be economic, but it could be fucking anything. They're just a migrant. We already have policies in place for economic migrants. But as they point out here, when the term economic migrants is used, it genuinely refers to the unskilled and semi-skilled individuals from impoverished countries in the global south. Economic migrants are not eligible for asylum under the Geneva Convention relating to the status of refugees because they are not refugees. Important thing to note. However, any migrant arriving on UK territory has the right to have their asylum claim reviewed. This is a human right. Okay, that's fine. Because if they say, can you review my asylum claim, and, and they're not actually in need of asylum, we can say no, and they can go home. If they decided not to follow the regular channels to try and become an economic migrant into Britain, it's because they don't qualify. If the claim is allowed, the applicant receives refugee status and is generally granted a five-year stay in the UK. But you'd think that's fine. I mean, that's people who have actually come from Syria and have actually been displaced by ISIS or whatever, actual refugees, should, you would think, in theory, be the ones getting that. And of course, there is a whole system of appeals set up, so if the initial claim is rejected, they can go through the legal process and, and keep fighting in the corner. And if at the end of all of this process, the claim is still rejected, then they are deported back to their place of origin, and the place of origin is somewhere that they have left because they just think they have better job prospects in our country. But unfortunately, they don't hold up to the standard of applicant that we receive. This is not racism. It's not illegitimate. It's a completely normal thing for any country to do with its own borders. So let Investopedia tell you about what an economic refugee is. An economic refugee is a person who leaves their home in search of better job prospects and higher living standards. So an economic migrant then. They're not a refugee, they're just a migrant, as per the definition we were just given. Economic refugees see little opportunity in their own countries to escape poverty and are willing to start over in a new country. Oh, they're willing to come to our countries and start over. You're welcome, I guess. An example of an economic refugee would be a computer programmer who makes a minimal income in his or her country and emigrates to collect substantially higher wage and improve standard of living. Right, so... They're, they're a refugee from not being in the bourgeoisie. That's what you're saying. It's, then, it's not that they're, like, impoverished in their own countries. A computer programmer in, like, Bulgaria or something makes more money than a poor person in Bulgaria. And they'll, they'll have the Bulgarian equivalent of a middle-class life. But that's not the same as an American equivalent of a middle-class life. And therefore, they are a refugee from their status of not being as rich as the Americans. And of course, being a refugee now, <laughs> that puts you in the exact category for someone making an attempt at asylum. I mean, if you're accepting claims for asylum, they kind of have to come from refugees, don't they? And then you get something like this, Project Economic Refugee. And it's basically the same definition for what is an economic refugee. It's run by a PR specialist and NOI graduate on online organizing with extensive background in community organizing tactics. Okay, so a professional activist. Project Economic Refugee is a progressive activist blog. Right, and that would really kind of explain the language used in this, wouldn't it? An economic refugee is a person whose economic prospects have been devastated and seeks to escape oppressive poverty, either here or in the United States or across the globe. Oh god, those fucking computer programmers. Because of global socio-economic injustice issues, as in a lot of these people live in poor countries, poverty is being treated as some inevitable thing that has no explanation and can never be solved. It's like an act of God. Poverty is being treated like a fucking act of God. And it's just weird that these people don't seem to understand that there are cures for poverty, but they require certain things. 
things like stability and order and a free market so people are free to actually build their own prosperity and if you look in the places that don't have these things oh my god these places are exceptionally poor but if you find the places that do have these things they tend to be really prosperous and wealthy the only option that many immigrants or economic refugees find themselves with is to ensure the survival and well-being of their families and thus join or take refuge in the united states job market yes you heard that right i don't come from a very wealthy country and therefore i need to take refuge in your job market making me a refugee so you, you you are obligated to give me asylum and by the way have you heard of the socio-economic rights of the migrants as in you're preventing them by keeping them in migrant camps from going out and living a full life and getting a job and buying property in a country they shouldn't even fucking be in and the thing is this example is the example of israel with african migrants and the complaint is about the socio-economic rights of the African migrants and the treatment by the Israeli state. The government is violating the socio-economic rights of those African migrants who cannot be deported and might be violating international law. Really, the socio-economic rights of African migrants who have illegally come into your country. Explaining that the state has a clear policy of pressing migrants to leave Israel through detention or deportation more than a decade after migrants started to stream into Israel across the then unsecured Egyptian border, the state has not arrived at any policy for dealing with those migrants who remain. Deport them. If they are in your country illegally because there was an unsecured border, they know what they did. They know that they shouldn't be there. And they know they're there because they want to take advantage of your quality of life. Because their own countries suck. But the question is... Why do their country suck? Of course, if people are poor and their economic rights are being violated in refugee camps, it only makes sense that the World Bank would urge the private sector to invest in these refugee camps and make some money. Why not just give all of these economic refugees jobs? You know, jobs that the native population could have used themselves, but become inevitably reliant upon as a crucial part of the economy in this particular example the washington post say that shuttering the camp would de deal a severe blow to the economy okay so now we can't do it so now we're forced to keep the economic migrants the people who have come here just for the purpose of making some more money and then you've got articles like this one from the guardian in which literally it's it is just so demonstrable that the left believes that economic crises are just fucking freak accidents of nature one million fled economic crisis hit venezuela for colombia in past year why why is venezuela crisis hit just listen to the way they fucking frame this at least one million people have entered colombia from venezuela since maduro's government descended into crisis last year well yeah i suppose that the socialist dictatorship of venezuela having a failing economy after absolutely screwing it by trying to implement socialist policies and becoming wildly corrupt in the process is creating an economic crisis in venezuela that is starving people to death and forcing them to flee with the economic crisis in venezuela intensifying you mean the dictator squeezing and squeezing and squeezing tighter and tighter on the venezuelan people to keep his position of status and privilege finally at the bottom maduro's alleged crackdown on opposition but let me tell you how tommy robinson is a racist caracas has been printing money as foreign reserve dwindles and the national currency the bolivar has become nearly worthless but we're not going to mention the word socialism once in this entire fucking article and the worst part about this is that these people are legitimate refugees from this poverty as in they are they are actively starving to death because of a dictator at home who's getting fat on tv these are what actual economic refugees are computer programmers from india or something who feel that they could make more money in san francisco or los angeles or something like that but are otherwise not starving to death are not economic refugees and the funny thing about a large number of these refugees is that most of them don't have fucking jobs but it takes time to find jobs as an immigrant as this article points out but after 10 years in germany only 60 percent of them had found jobs so 40% of them are just being supported by the German state. Basically, if you're not a proper refugee and you have to put the word economic in front of it, 
you should be sent home.' 